we're on. Come find us. We're going to do ink wash today. Come find us. Give me a thumbs up. Type in a comment. Let's see, will Donovan be the we're first one on? Come find us. Or Sophia, or Casey, or who else gets on in the mornings? Nick, let's see who's gonna be first. Mr. Joey's watching, see what thumbs up comes up first, what comment comes up first. Say hi, tell us who's out there. Come find us. Are we on, Joey? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, we're watching for somebody to sign on with us. Let's see if Donovan's gonna be on first. I think Donovan's. Four on there. Oh, so who's on there? Oh, one, one, yeah. we don't know when Lydia people are on unless you oh, type Lydia us in a little Patrick comment. Lydia and Patrick. Hi, Lydia. Hi, Patrick. All your clay is out on the table, and of course, we hear thunder outside. So it might be a pouring, yucky, rainy day. Amanda Phillips, whoever that. Which? Is. Oh, that's Sarah Elizabeth. Hi, Sarah Elizabeth. What? She's with her dad, and her mom's watching. So. Amanda. And Sarah Elizabeth, are you watching with Dad? Did I hear you two are in different spots this week? So you'll have to compare notes and show your pictures to each other. Um, if it's going to be pouring rain outside, we have a table outside with everybody's clay on it that turned in clay. It's under our awning, so depending on how splashy and nasty and windy it is, we may pull the clay inside. Uh, but there will be a table outside our front door today and tomorrow and Friday. Everybody's clay that turned it in from week number seven. That was the week of May 4th when we made our bowls. Uh, everybody's clay is out there. So I have Elizabeth Ross made these awesome toucan birds that are out there. I fell in love with those. We have some really awesome bowls out there. We've got some bowls that have birds in them. Patrick, your snake turned out awesome in your bowl. Alicia's there, Sophia and Casey. I've got your groots and your owls and your bowls from <clears throat> the second time we did clay. So everything's on the table. It's kind of nasty, ecky day, so I don't know whether people will come out to pick up today or not. The table will be out there tomorrow. It's out there by 10 o'clock. And tomorrow, we're here at the studio until late because we have a painting party tomorrow night. Lizzie waves, Scott. So, hello, Elizabeth. Your clay is out there. Um, oh, and there's Sarah Elizabeth. And there's Sarah Elizabeth. Joey just saw Sarah Elizabeth t tune in. Uh, everybody's clay is out there that dropped off clay to us. The last of all the clay. We have a number of pieces of clay that I could not see a name on the bottom. You might have put your name on there. It just might have been too faint. Um, some of our bottoms exploded. It was an interesting kiln this time. Uh, sometimes clay, those of you that have done clay with me before, clay can be temperamental. Even if you've done clay for 50 years, like Mr. Mark, almost 50 years. Um, clay can explode in the kiln for all kinds of reasons. And it can crumble, little pieces can come off. One of the pieces on Sophia's came off. Uh, so clay can be very temperamental. And we had, I think, three different bowls explode. The whole bottoms just exploded off of them. And so we got little pieces of clay and some other pieces stuck together. It was a really fun kiln fire. So your clay's out on the table. If it's too nasty out, we'll pull it in today. I don't want it to get all wet, although it won't hurt it. Um, Bay, if you're watching, your coasters are out there. I think you're, and let's see, who else did they see? Effie and Millie, clay's out there. Uh, watching to see, make sure we give everybody a couple minutes to get tuned in. We're going to do an ink wash today. We're going to use our red flares. So we're going to make some low country scene here. Um, we had ice cream yesterday that made me hungry. And now I'm sitting here looking at crabs and shrimp. Doesn't that sound like a really good dinner or lunch to have crab and shrimp? We'll go ahead of a seafood fest. So we're just, we're on a hunger and today and now i hear the rain pouring down on our roof uh, so we are using our red flare marker so you want to find this little red flare marker you've got in your activity bag you'll need a pencil and your little white eraser 
So we're going to block them in first in pencil, and then we'll use our ink wash. So we'll also need, at the very end, we'll use our Sharpie to give them a couple eyeballs and some antenna on our shrimp. But you're going to need a cup of water and your round paintbrush. I left mine on the table over there, Mr. Joey. So find your red flare. We're using a piece of watercolor paper today. So this is a piece of the thicker paper that does not have a check mark on it. <laughs> okay, Mr. Joey put check marks on the thinner mixed media paper and we want a thick piece. So look for a piece, thicker paper that does not have a check mark on it. So check all your corners, check both sides, make sure there's no check mark, that should be a piece of watercolor paper. Nice and thick and we're gonna sketch on it first with our pencil and then we're gonna use our red flare marker so we're going to sketch very lightly with our pencil. See how we don't see a lot of pencil lines? And I love the colors. Look on my crab here. Look at all those really cool colors that you get with the red flare pen. I get some really deep reds out here at the corner of his shell and going across. Look how light it turned out. You get all these pretty shades. So we're going to learn how to draw a crab. They're really fun to draw. I don't know that I'm exactly accurate, but he's pretty close, I think, to looking like a crab. So if you've got your paper, make sure you get yourself a little cup of water. And we're going to have our little round brush. This little green, I think most of you have a green brush. Some of you might have some wooden ones, um, depending on how long you've had your brush. It might not look quite like this. But we're going to use this little round point brush. We want a point so we can get in our little nooks and crannies of our drawing. and. We're going to start with the pencil and your eraser and your paper. So I'm going to let Mr. Joey pull our camera in. Do we have most people signed in, Mr. Joey, you think? Are we good to go? I'm going to put my Sharpie up here. We'll use it a little later. And we'll move our bag over. And we're going to put... Oh, I was going to do a vertical. I did it horizontal, didn't I, Mr. Joey? Makes it a little harder to fit on our table. Let's take our activity bag off. Yes. <laughs> okay, we're gonna we're gonna adjust our cameras just a little bit, maybe. Um, <clears throat> we were setting up. We like where I can look up and see you. So you had that little box yesterday where you could still see me up in the corner. It's up in the left corner on your screen and then you can see what we're doing up close on the other camera. Um, so Mr. Joe is gonna get this set so you can see me. Can you see me? Well, not yet. There, there we go. Okay, so I can look up and actually see and talk to you. And I tend to use my hands a lot, don't I, when I'm talking about shapes of things. This way, when my hands aren't down here and they always went out of the screen, you'll be able to see me and see what I'm talking about. And I'm going to let Mr. Joey make sure we're adjusted here where we can see both of our drawings. So we're good. <clears throat> okay, have you guys got your, your water and your paintbrush? Are you ready to draw a crab? I'm going to show you a really simple way to draw this crab. Um, I think he kind of looks like a crab. They have this really neat shape to them. It's kind of like a triangle, kind of like an oval. He's like half oval and half triangle. And yes, Joey keeps reminding me where to look. Okay, so this is the shape of our shell. We're going to start with the crab's big shell. Now see on my drawing, I've got a crab. I've got one, two, three, four, five shrimp. So I have one crab and five shrimp. So I have an odd number of crabs and an odd number of shrimps. Together they make up an even number, but I think it works. So you can think of putting however many shrimp on here you want. You can think of putting just a crab if you don't want to do the shrimp. You could just do shrimp if you want to. So just stop and wait and I'll, you'll see how we draw a shrimp. But I'm going to put a big crab on here. I want to think about the relationship of the crab with its size to the shrimp. So when I first drew my first shrimp on here with a crab, 
he was almost as big as the crab and I thought well that looks kind of silly because shrimp are a lot smaller than crabs eh, most of the time right Mr. Joey Mr. Joey said crab eat shrimp crab will eat just about anything I learned even dead fish or live fish barnacles shrimp they even eat other crabs so we want our crab to be bigger in proportion to our shrimp so I'm gonna make the crab pretty big over here and one reason I want to make him kind of big is look at all those wonderful shades we can get in his shell okay so I want him kind of on a diagonal I think that makes a more interesting composition and some of my shrimp are off the page this guy is going off the page this guy's coming on the page this guy's going this way so we're gonna start with the crab over here and I want to leave enough space so if I look at the middle of my paper here's about the middle of my paper isn't it so he takes up almost one half of the sheet of paper here so he's a big focal point and what I want to do is I want to make sure he's on this really cool angle here so I'm going to give myself a little line and remember I want you to draw really lightly with your pencil and I think I might need a new pencil Mr. Joey this one's just about out of lead so can you reach one in there Mr. Joey's <laughs> reaching under the cameras to find me a pencil that one looks a little better okay to make sure I get my crab on this nice angle here I'm gonna find the middle of my paper which is about here and I, so I want the crab to take up this big space over on this side. His arms are going to reach on that half. But here's about the middle of my paper. So I'm going to, to start, draw myself a diagonal line. Right, I'm going to imagine going right through the middle of my crab shell here. Now I'm going to press a little harder so you can see my lines. Is my paper in the camera, Mr. Joe? Um, but I want you to press really lightly. So I'm going to draw a diagonal line like this. This is what I'm going to use to get my shell in the right place. Now, do I want my shell that wide? That would be like a monster mega crab. I think they had mega crabs back when they had megalodons and all that. So this is just my angle I want to get on. I'm going to draw myself a curve on the bottom for this part of him. Now this is not a big round circle curve, just a little bit of a curve. I'm gonna make this curve how big I want my shell to be. So maybe about like that. That's about a better size for my crab to be. Now what did we talk about? This half of the crab is a part of like an oval, but the top half almost looks like a triangle, doesn't it? Does it come to a point at the back of the crab? No, so we're gonna flatten the top of our triangle but I'm gonna come up. I'm gonna think here's about the middle of my oval, right? My curve that I made. So I'm gonna come up here, give myself a little dot up here. And I'm gonna come up like this. And I'm gonna come up like this. And I'm gonna flatten him right across where the dot is. Okay. Remember how when I'm drawing sideways, I get a little lopsided here, so. So that's about the shape I want my crab to be. You got a good crabby looking shape there? I'm going to erase my extra lines here. I erase that little dot I gave it. I don't need my diagonal going through the middle anymore. And what's one thing I'm going to change? My shell looks pretty good. Kind of looks like a crab. Yeah. But the front edge of a crab it's almost kind of scallopy looking oh there we go how about if we do that mr j the front edge of the crab gets kind of like this little ruffly pointy edges not so many curves and ruffles as, the, as their little points so i'm going to come along here and give him some little points like this. I'm just making some little scallops that come up to little points. I want my line to look more like that. And it comes out to these little points out here. Oh, the rain is pouring down out there. Mr. Mark, would you go check and see if our pottery is getting all soaked on the uh, table out there? It was fine. Okay. 
Thank you. As long as it's not blood orange. Okay, so did you put a little bit of little points on the edge of the crab there? One more thing we're going to do to the edge of this crab. Did you see the crab's eyeballs here? They're these little black eyeballs. They're spaced really far apart, and they kind of poke out of his shell, but they sit back in the shell a little bit. Look what happens to the scallops. Is We want his eyeball to come up in the shell just a little bit. So I'm going to pick a spot, not all the way out at the edges. I'm going to come in just a little bit. I want a big space in between them, and I'm going to give myself a kind of, well, I don't want his eyeball to be that big. I'm going to give myself a little little scallop that comes up just a little higher where I want his eyeball to be. That will remind me when I'm putting my ink wash there that I want two little spots here. Oh goodness, listen to our thunder. I want two little scallops there that are going to be a little bigger so I can put my eyeball in there. Okay? Now, I'm going to teach you how we're going to draw some crab legs and some crab arms. Their big claws in the front are really fun. But we're going to start with the back. Crabs, at least all the ones that I've looked at, have four legs on each side. The back two start, remember this flat part we made at the top of our triangle? They're kind of like on either side of that flat spot. And look at the crab's legs. They can get nice and curvy, but they're in little sections. They're in like little different joints. See the little, I think of them as like little elbows in between all their joints. So I want you to think about, we're going to make some curvy lines as a guideline, but when we draw their legs on, they're going to come in these little straight sections. So think of when you see a stop sign. It's kind of like a circle, but it's made of all those little straight lines that go around to make the circle. So we're making a curvy line here for his leg, but when we draw it on, we're going to draw it in all these straight sections that make up the curve. Does that make sense? So we want to find the back of your crab shell that you drew here. And we got this little flat top to it, right? Okay. Now, here's the two sides of the flat part of his shell. And we're going to make a curve just as a guideline. So think about going right down the middle of his leg here. Now his back two legs are kind of sticking back, so I'm going to have them curve out a little bit and curve up like this. So out a little bit and up like this. That one might go right off the paper. So they're coming from the two ends of our flat part. Okay. And then we're going to put three more legs on each side. And notice where they come from. They come from this middle part of the side of the crab. They don't come from the front. They don't come from way up here on the back. All three are going to come from the side here. So I'm going to give myself a guideline. This one comes out like it's going across the side and curves up a little bit at the end. So I'm going to bring it, I'm going to think of fitting three legs here. So I'll give myself three little dots so I make sure they can fit on here. Kind of space them out on your side. Here's how much room we've got on the side. You want to space out three legs there. Give yourself a little dot. And then this one's going to come out like it's going horizontal, but at the end it's going to tip up a little bit. Okay. And then this one in the middle, it's going to come out and it's going to tip down at the end. His legs can get kind of long here on the sides. And then I got one more. <clears throat> kind of follow this same curve. It's going to come out like this. Okay. Did you get your three legs? fit in there. <clears throat> Miss Jenny needs to finish my smoothie here. While you're drawing your three legs, I'm going to take a bite of my smoothie. Okay, did you get your legs on here? Well, they're not really our legs, but they're our guidelines. Before we draw the joints in these legs, let's go over and put the three legs on the other side. So you got your side over here. You go from here to here. So kind of space out, give yourself three little dots there. So you know you got room to space them on there. Okay, space them this way. Now this first one, here's our one that went off the back. So we got one that's gonna come out to the side and at the very end it's gonna turn up just a little. So mine's gonna run off the page, isn't it? 
he's going to come out here like this and he's going to turn up at the end. Now you probably have room to fit yours on there. And then the other two are going to do like this. They're going to come out and they're going to turn down a little. Come out and turn down a little. This guy might be a little long over here. They have long legs, but maybe not quite that long. Oh, Mr. Joey says, need to talk a little louder. <coughs> I think my legs over here got just a little long, so I shortened this one up a little bit. Shortened that one up a little bit. This one ran right off the page. Yours might not run off the page. Now, we don't want his legs to just look like one skinny line, right? They have these joints to them. So they have sections. Are their legs really fat? No. We're gonna start each section with two little straight lines, and we're gonna put these little round joints in. They're almost like, think of, think of like, a, like a joint. If you could see your bones inside where your elbow is or your knee, you've got like a little ball and then the bones from your leg hook on the ball on either side so that your leg can bend. So we're gonna do the same thing with drawing the crab's legs. We're gonna come out here, let's start with this first one over here that went up on the back, okay? Now, one thing I'm gonna tell you is if we really looked at a real crab, he might have more joints, he might have more straight sections than my crab. That's kind of the fun of being the artist. We want to give the illusion he's a crab, give the impression he's a crab. He looks like a good crab, right? Do we have to be technically accurate? No, I'm an artist, so I'm making my artistic interpretation of this crab. I haven't looked up how exactly how many joints their legs have, but we're gonna give a good impression of it, okay? So we're gonna start next to the shell and I'm gonna draw two little lines like this. Can we see, I'm gonna zero in on here, Mr. Joey, okay? So I'm gonna, on either side, this is my guideline going down the middle of the leg, okay? So I'm gonna draw two little lines on either side and then I'm gonna put this little ball joint in. Now, since it's got sections hooking onto it, it gets kind of squished. So, so think of taking a beach ball and squishing one side of it. So it's more like a triangle beach ball, okay? So we're gonna make like a triangle beach ball in here. We want the ball, the little beach ball to be squished on this side and a little rounder on this side. And then we're gonna make this straight section. Do you see how the sections of the crabs... see that. Oh, we can't see this one. Okay, You're good. zoomed in on it. Okay, how about, can we, will this help, Mr. Joey? I'm gonna let Mr. Joey zoom us in so we can see these legs and see these legs while we work. Okay, do you notice my straight section? The sides are slightly curved, aren't they? They look like, it looks like a long skinny oval, okay? We don't want it too round, more, more straight than round, but think of a long skinny oval gonna give it a section here that's gonna fit on either side. Give these little round sections here. I'm gonna stick another little triangle round piece in there. And I'm gonna stick some sides here. I'm just coming right from my little round joint and I'm making a curve up here and a curve up here. Now the end of their claws, I'm gonna make this a little rounder here. Goodness, the rain's coming out very hard. Can you hear it? You probably can't hear it, but. Um, on the end of the crab's legs, they come to kind of a point, okay? So we're gonna do a little bit around, but I'm gonna make this last round one come to a point here, okay? So I gave him two long skinny oval sections and then a point on the end. And I put my squishy little balls in between. Okay, let's try one on this side. This is our guideline going down the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna give two short little straight lines where he hooks into the shell. And then I'm gonna put my squishy little ball in here. This on the outside is gonna be the skinny part of the ball. So I'm gonna make a ball that looks like that. So squished end over here, round end over here. And we're gonna give it a straight section here, put a squishy ball in here, give another straight section here, and mine's gonna run right off the page. You would finish your straight section like this, 
and then put two little curves that come to a point, very skinny. His legs get a little skinnier as they go. It's like drawing a tree trunk and tree limbs. Slightly skinnier the longer it gets, okay? Now we'll go back and erase out all those little guidelines, but first let's draw his other legs here. Let's come over and do this side. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna start with a little straight section. We're gonna put a squishy little ball in there and give our skinny ovals until we get to the end. So here's my little straight section. I'm gonna put a squishy little ball in there. And then I'm gonna give it a nice long skinny oval. We'll put another squishy little ball in there. Put a long skinny oval going this way. And on the end of this oval, I'm going to put a skinny little pointed claw. That's like the cross one's bigger than the first one. This one? Uh -uh. Oh, this one. That's wider than that. Oh, yep, Mr. Joey's good. You know how when we draw tree trunks, once you draw it, you always go back and check. Make sure it gets skinnier as it goes out. When I go back and check this one, this one got a little skinnier. And then this one got fat. So I want to make sure this one's a little skinnier here. Check it just like we do when we're drawing trees. You don't want him. There we go. How about if we make him a little skinnier there? Looks a little better. Okay, we're going to do the next one. Very short little straight lines here. Put a squishy ball in there. Draw us a long skinny oval. When I'm drawing my pieces, I'm making them go on either side of my guideline. That's why I put this curve. That means I know I want to start curving my next long skinny oval section here. So I'm going to put a squishy ball in there and put a oval right there. See, I'm following my guideline I gave myself. And then I'm going to put the long skinny pointy claw on the end. Okay. So I got one, two, three, one more leg coming down this side. Now, I might not even see so much of this skinny little front section here. It's kind of tucking itself underneath the claw there. So I'm just gonna see a little of that skinny ball and those skinny lines. I'm gonna get my long skinny oval on. Put myself another squishy ball there. And get another long oval here. And then put my pointy claw out on the end. Okay, I'm kind of liking my legs. Are you liking how your crab legs look? If this was one of those, or no, I guess I'm thinking, am I thinking of crab legs? Yeah, crab legs, Alaskan king crab legs. That way I could draw really fat, big legs. Alaskan king crabs have really big legs. They're really big. Oh, they're like, they're like this big around. Do you all like eating crab? I love crab. Crab legs, when we get them, are usually maybe about that big around. And you crack open the shell and you peel, you kind of pull the meat out. And there's only a little bit of meat in there because they're little bitty crab legs. Alaskan king crabs are really fat. You get all this good meat. Okay, you got all your legs on there? We're going to come over and draw these three on this other side. So we're going to do it the same way. We're going to start with two short, short little lines. Make a squishy little ball in there. Give ourselves an oval. Give ourselves another squishy little ball. And this is where mine's gonna go right off the page, but you're gonna make an oval, just like this one. And then on the end of the oval, you're gonna do the slightly little curved lines that come to a point for his claw, okay? And then we'll do one more here. Squishy little ball, long skinny oval, squishy little ball long skinny oval and claw point and one last one here squishy little ball long skinny oval squishy little ball long skinny oval and claw point there we go he looks like a pretty awesome claw awesome crab with awesome claws okay the fun claws are these front ones do you see his front claws they almost look like, like a muscle, uh, um, muscle builder, um, body builder, a body builder. And they get those like, um, like the rock who was in Moana and, and 
all kinds of things. And he gives these really big biceps, right? So look at our crab. He gets the little <clears throat> squishy ball joint <clears throat> that hooks his front claws on. And then he gets this huge, big, like bicep tear. It's this giant, big, squishy circle. It's more flat on the inside that's facing his eyes and more round on the outside, okay? And then we get these claws, these awesome big claws. So you notice where these big claws come out of? They come out of the, just on the front side of the corners. Remember how we drew the corner of our shell out here? His big old claws are gonna come right out from there. So we're gonna make two short little lines. I'm gonna draw both claws at the same time. Short little lines, just like we did short little lines coming out here. Then we're gonna put this big old bicep muscle in. So I want his claw, if I do this shape, I want his claw to come out and curve under like he's reaching his claws together, okay? So I'm gonna give myself a guideline. I want it to come out here and reach around in front of him. So I want this one to come out and reach around in front of him, okay? So give yourself a little guideline. Can you see my lines? I did them very lightly. So we wanna come out and go around. This one could be a little closer up towards his face, and this one can be a little farther out, like he's reaching a little further with that crab claw. Okay, so those are my guidelines. I came out with my two little lines. I want to make this squishy ball. This is a really big squishy ball. And I want it to be mostly flat on this side and then it's going to get bigger and rounder on the outside. So on the inside that's facing the eyeballs, I want it a little flatter and then I want it to get big and round out here. Okay, so did you, it's almost like the, it reminded me of the Hulk's big hands, his fists. These are like he's got two big clenched fists coming out of his body here. So did we get the squishy biceps on here? Now the claws, these big claws in the front are actually in two pieces. We're gonna draw this side that faces his face, faces his eyeballs first, and it comes out. It gets this zigzaggy like sawtooth end to it, and it comes across here like this is the whole hand. Think of this as the whole hand with the thumb here. And then we're gonna add this long piece like all your fingers were together and it gets a zigzag sawtooth on it too. So I gave myself my guidelines. This is the, the direction I want my claws to go. I'm gonna start with the big part of the claw that's facing his eyeballs. Here's where his eyeballs are gonna go. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna follow my guideline. I wanna come about halfway out and I'm gonna curve it in a little bit and then put zigzag teeth about halfway back and then I'm gonna curve over and come down. So this is my wide part of the claw and this is the end of the claw, okay? The zigzaggy part of the claw is next to the eyeballs. I'm gonna try it over here. Go out a little bit Give a curve and put my zigzags on. Halfway back, then I'm gonna curve it over and come all the way back here. Oh, I want this meat a little better. There we go. We won't make it quite so curvy. There we go. Okay, so we got the, the big parts of the claws. Now we wanna put this curved other finger on there. So I'm going to curve this around. It's going to be a little longer. Oops, but I don't want to make it straight, remember? That's where we want to put like sawtooth on it. So make a sawtooth, make it a little longer than that one, and then curve back so it meets right back here. Should follow this same curve. So it's going to hook right into the big part of your claw there. Do the same thing over here. Make this saw teeth. We want this one a little longer than that one. Right back here. And then this is a nice curve that's going to meet this curve back here. If your curve gets a little bigger, you can make this part a little bigger over here. Okay. You just want this part to come over and meet 
where this curve comes in. Okay. So if when you're curving back here, it's bigger than what you drew here, just pull that out to meet it, okay? Now we have our crab's big claws. We can erase those guidelines in the middle of our claws because we don't want those middle lines showing up when we do our ink wash. So I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna erase the middle line out of here. And while you're doing that, you can lightly, lightly erase the pencil lines you did so they don't show up too much under our ink wash. You really want to get the guideline out of the middle. So erase that guideline out of the middle. While you're doing that, you'll probably lighten up your pencil lines too. So I'm not pressing hard with my eraser. I'm going over it lightly so my lines get a little lighter. So all I'm going to see is my pretty ink wash. Okay, did you get get your crab all erased is he ready to go now let me show you a really simple way to draw shrimp see how my shrimp some of them have curled their tail underneath them some of them are swimming straight i kind of like the ones that have their tail curled under them i think they're like hovering there trying to to hide from the crab they think he's just looking this way so these guys are hiding to make a curved shrimp like this i'm going to pick a spot over here and if I look at the shape of my shrimp look at the shape of this shrimp it's kind of like a letter J isn't it so I'm gonna pick a spot and I'm gonna put a letter J just the shape I want my shrimp to be okay so I think when I look at my crab here When I look at where I want my crab to be, uh, and where my crab is and where I want my shrimp to be so he can hide, I'm gonna make this little letter J as a guideline, just like we gave ourselves guidelines with the legs. So I think I'm gonna put one over here like he's hiding. So I'm gonna put a letter J over here. And remember, we want the shrimp to be small compared to the crab. This is a, like a little tiny baby shrimp here. And I might make another one hovering just over here. This one, maybe I'll make this one a little bigger. Okay. So those two are hiding together. I'm going to put one right over here. Maybe this guy could be a little bigger. He's going to hide right underneath his claw here. So I got one, two, three. You can add as many as you would like. Once we start drawing them, you'll see how easy it is. You could peek one coming in from down here. You could add one going off the page. You could add one going off up here. If we want them swimming straight, we're just going to make a guideline, whatever shape you want it. And here's how easy it is to draw a shrimp. They've got this kind of teardrop-shaped head, don't they? This is their mouth out here. It comes almost to a point that their antennas come out from, the point right there. So we're gonna make a teardrop and look at the size of their head. Let's see if I can do this. Here's his head. Here's the rest of his body. If I uncurled his tail, it'd come to about there. So his head takes up almost half of the length of our letter J there. So I'm gonna pick a spot. Remember this first letter J I put here? I'm gonna put his head on first. I'm gonna start with the point of my teardrop out here at the end. I might go just a little farther than my J. And I'm going to come about halfway down my J there and make this teardrop. Okay, do you see my teardrop here? And then his little bodies in these little segments. If you've ever eaten a shrimp, you know how the shell curves over in all those little pieces. And it's almost like drawing like a letter U. And then we're going to hook another letter U under that. And another one under that. Another one under that. We're going to follow the guideline. The letter U's are going to get slightly smaller as we get to the tail, okay? Not really tiny, but slightly smaller. So I'm going to put one here that's about as wide as my teardrop head. And then I'm going to put another one. And they're going to turn a little bit because I'm following my little guideline. And then this one's going to turn around here and around here. And then their tail kind of looks like a little flat triangle 
like a beaver's tail or a platypus tail, okay? I'm going to put some little lines in there. So there's my shrimp. We'll put his antenna on after we've done the ink wash. So I'm going to go around on all my letter J's and do the same thing. Start at the end of your J, at the straight part. Give yourself a teardrop shape. Start behind the teardrop and make a U, about the same size as the teardrop. Make another U a little smaller, little smaller, little smaller, little smaller, little smaller, and give it a nice big flat kind of triangle tail. Okay, there's my two little baby shrimp hiding next to the crab. Here's my bigger shrimp over here. Start at the end of the J, the straight part of the J. Give yourself a big teardrop. Remember, his head's about half of his body here. Start with a U behind that. Put another one behind that. Another one behind that. It's kind of like a cross between a U and part of a box. Another one behind that, another one behind that, and then I'll give him his big flat triangle tail there. Okay, those are my shrimps. We can add more. You can go back later this afternoon or tonight. You can, you can work on adding more shrimp. You can let your picture dry a little bit and decide where else you're gonna put some shrimp. I'm gonna lightly erase my guideline, my letter J that went right down the middle of my shrimp, and lighten up my lines a little bit and let's look at where we're gonna put the red ink. Now, if you've done ink wash before with me, you know that every place we put the ink, once we touch it with the water, it's going to bleed and blend a little bit into the paper. So places that we want it to be really red, a little darker, we wanna put more ink lines. We can't just put an outline. The outline's only gonna give us a little bit of pink. So where we want it lightest, we're just gonna leave the outline. Where we want it darker, we're gonna add some extra ink. So we're gonna do our crab first. You ready? You got your red flare markers here. Did you erase your pencil lines a little bit so they're not gonna show as much? So we've lightened them up a little bit. Miss Jenny still look a little dark. Okay, you ready to use your ink? I'm gonna start with his shell. Let's do his shell first. We're gonna come around where we drew his shell and just put a line around where we drew it. So this is the outline. Get your little scallops. When you come to where the eyeballs are gonna go, remember you're gonna have a little deeper, bigger scallop there. These are just little points we put in. When you get to the eyeball, give it a bigger spot. Make your little points right over to the other side of his shell. Now, I don't want his whole shell to be pale pink, so I'm gonna give him a little extra color out here around the edges. Notice the lines where I gave him extra color. We want the lines to go in the contour of our crab. Is a crab flat like a pancake? Mm -mm. It's a little curved. Crabs have a little bit of curve to them. So when I put lines on here, I don't wanna put straight lines, I wanna put kind of curved lines like this. So I'm gonna come up here at the back. I'm gonna add a little extra color. I'm gonna make my lines curved. I'm gonna curve in from the side here. We don't wanna color the whole thing in. Use your ink pen nice and lightly. Don't scrub with it. We're just putting a little extra ink in some places that we want it to get a little extra color. Okay, so I'm gonna come along the sides like this. All my lines are gonna have a little bit of a curve to them, which is gonna help him look curvy. Right out here at the edge, I can kind of go back and forth and get it really a lot of ink in some places. So right around here in the corners, I can really color it in a little bit. And when I get out here, I want the lines to stay a little curvy as they go down this way they might curve that way I'm gonna come along just in the points out here at the edges I'm gonna give them some extra color okay we don't have to have a lot as I come along the edge here I'm gonna let it get a little lighter so see I haven't put as many lines right out at the edge here 
I'm going to do the same thing here. Right in the corner, I'm going to get a lot of extra color. So I'm going to color in there a little bit. And as I come up the side, I want them to curve. Remember, I want to get that little bit of curve to my lines. A little extra color right out here at the edge. And then curve like this. As I come down here, they get almost straight and then start curving this way. So a little extra color leading up to where his eyeball is. Get a little bit of curve to those lines when you're drawing. Okay, let's see. That's going to give him some nice shadow out here around the edges. How about a little extra right at the front edge of his shell too. So I'm just going to come along in these little points that I made. Give a little extra ink right down in here. I'm not pressing hard with my pen. If you press really hard with the pen, you almost stick the ink so forcefully down in the paper that the ink wash can't pull it back out. So don't press too hard with your ink. You can put a little extra down here. Uh, now his claws are going to stay pretty light. So I'm going to go around my lines here and you don't have to be perfect you don't have to follow your pencil lines perfectly and I'm gonna get all my little ovals my little pointy claws on the end go around all these little pencil lines Get all our little claws drawn on here. We are going to give a little extra color on those skinny oval sections of his leg. And a little bit on those squishy balls. So let me show you a great way to make a little bit of color on his legs. You know how when we make something that we want it to look round and we've talked about how making something look round looking round means you need to have a shadow on one side of it lighter on the other side and you go from darker to lighter and that gives it a round feeling so we want to kind of do the same thing on his legs here we want to pick one side of his legs let's do this half first we want to pick one side and give a little bit of shadow to it, okay? So I'm going to think if if I've got most of the shadow like on this back side of him, I'm going to take this back side, I'm going to put a little extra color just around this side, just around this side of these parts, okay? I want them to curve like the part. My shadow's got to go in the same contour as the part. Put a little extra there and a little extra there. So we're just putting a little extra couple lines right out at this side. So just give yourself a few extra lines on one side of your legs. I'm just putting a couple extra lines. Not trying to color the whole thing in. Just a few extra lines. But I do want my extra lines to curve. See how they're curving like that oval? And now on this side, I'm going to keep them on this side. So we'll cur put a few extra lines here. Do the same thing around here. Put a few extra lines. A few extra lines here. I'm coloring really fast, aren't I? You guys take your time. Remember, Miss Jenny's just trying to get all your instruction in here. You can pull the video back out and look at it and you can take your time. You don't have to go as fast as I do. I'm just putting a couple extra lines of color on his legs. I kept it just on one side of his legs, okay? If you've still got legs to color in, don't worry. Just watch, leave these legs, you can go back and fill them in. Because once you've done one, you know how to do them all. Why don't you watch and come do one of these big claws with me, okay? So we're gonna move to his big claw. 
Now his big claws are going to be right up next to the shell, which has got a lot of red on it, right? Mr. Joey keeps having to move the camera around. I've got a lot of red on his shell, so I want his claw here to be a little lighter. I love this part. See, look how I left that little white, that little white curve, almost like a little reflection on his shell because he's in the water and he's wet and shiny. So I'm not going to put a lot of extra red on here. So we're going to go, we're going to outline it just like we did with the legs. Remember, this is our squishy big bicep, kind of flatter on the inside. It gets rounder on the outside here. And here's my big claw, comes around and goes across. And then this is where we get our little sawtooth. So we get some zigzags here. And then it curves on the back. It comes back down to fit into the bicep there. The other claw gets just a slightly bit longer. So it's gonna curve this way. So they're curving together and then we get it sawtoothed on the inside. Come over here, we'll outline this one. Here comes our two little straight lines. Little flatter curve on the inside and then it gets a little fatter back here. Those are his big biceps. So we're gonna come make this curve here, go across Make our zigzag curve back here and we're going to curve up just a little longer and zigzag back. Now we could just leave it with just those lines but then the whole thing is going to be very very faint like this. So I picked a couple spots where we're going to add a little more color. So I'm going to put a little color on the outside. See how we added a few extra lines on the outside of these legs? So we're going to do a few extra lines. I want it to be very curvy. So it looks like the contour of this little bicep muscle here. But we're going to get it a little, a little extra color on the outside of that. And I think we'll get a little extra color on this claw right down here where it fits into the other part of the claw. And we'll give a little extra, a few extra lines back here. Okay, let's do the same thing over here. We'll add a few extra lines curved like our big fat bicep here. And then we'll give a little shadow where this claw is fitting into the other one. So we're just adding some extra lines so we'll get a little extra color. So here I put a little extra color on the inside. So let's put a little extra color on the inside of this one. Okay, what do you think? Crab looks pretty good. Let's add a little bit of color. Shrimps are very, very small. We don't need to put much color on them at all. We're just going to outline our pencil lines where we did them outline around our little box use here. Outline our little flat triangle tail. The tail doesn't quite come to a point. It fits into the um, body kind of flat there. I'm going to put just a few extra lines right on the bottom edge. Okay. And we'll put just a few extra lines on the curve right here at the back of his head. Okay, That's all we need to do on the shrimp. They're very small, so we don't want to get too much color on them. So I'm going to go around with my boxy little U's here. And they turn the corner here and get this little flat tail. I'm going to put a few extra lines in the tail and then just put a few extra little lines on the bottom the shrimp here and I got one more shrimp over here here's this guy he's brave he's right up next to this guy's claw so I'm putting my little U my little boxy U's on here they're following around my little letter J 
and I got my big flat tail so I'm going to put a few extra lines in the tail and on this bottom side I want to put a few extra lines so I can shade right on the, it's kind of like at the bottom back corner so bottom in this back corner there we go okay I have eyeless antennaless feet oh we forgot the feet on our shrimp shrimp have all those long little leggy feet don't they uh, they have these longer feet on the front of them here they come out and they turn a corner like a knee but they're longer on the front we'll give him some I need got to turn my paper Joey I can't do this upside down okay so find your shrimp here and from his teardrop head we want to come out and back, just like we're making these. They can crisscross over each other. They're just long legs coming from there. And then back here on his kind of U-shaped body, he, they're going to be shorter and a little fatter. So V, V, oops, those lined right up with each other. V, V. How many legs? Um, I put five. This guy actually ended up with six. They just seem to have a lot of them. And then we're going to get, I think, five little shorter fat ones coming from his body here. So let's try. One, two, three, four, five. And then we'll do some short little curved ones back here. Somebody will have to look up for Miss Jenny and see if there's a specific number of legs that shrimp have. But remember, this is our in artistic impression of a shrimp and a crab. Oh, yeah. I guess you'd probably have an even number of legs showing, considering you're probably seeing them from both sides of the shrimp. Okay, so here's what I want to remind you when we're doing an ink wash. Put your brush in the water. You want to tap it just once. Make sure, this is very important, make sure that you take your finger and get these drips off of that metal collar. Otherwise they drip on your paper. Now we're gonna come in and the water works like a magnet. You wanna get close to the edge. Don't go through the edge because then our ink's gonna go this way. It's like a magnet. As soon as you get close to that ink, the ink starts bleeding into where your brush is. So slowly inch the point of that brush up to your little scallops there, and then pull it out like this. Inch up to where the edge of your line is, and pull it back into here. You wanna work a little quickly, dip it in, brush it, put it back down. As long as the ink is wet, you can blend it into the white paper. Dip it, tap it once inch that point right up to the edge swirl it around in this ink we got lots of ink over here so I can pull the ink way out into a shell like this swish you kind of twirl your brush around in the ink and you can pull that look at I can pull that red color right out from over here across into a shell swirl it around in that ink and pull that color up now rinse all that color off tap it and pull the ink out so we get this really pale color right in the middle. Dip it, tap it once or twice, inch it up to your side. You kind of have to work fast with ink wash because while the ink is wet, we want it to blend. So I'm coming all around this side here. I'm gonna pull some of that red color right across. I wanna leave a lot of my white paper in the middle of a shell. The ink will continue to soak in and fill in some of that white space. So don't fill in all your white space. Leave a little bit on this crab here. Rinse all that ink out, pat it dry. I just don't want that harsh little line there. There we go. So blur the line a little bit and I'm gonna let that, I'm gonna let that little dot of white show in his shell. And you watch, it'll soak in. Rinse it out, tap it. Come in here and do the same thing. Inch it towards that little line of red and it's going to pull that color right onto his claw there. Swirl it around in that dark part. 
inch it right up to his line there. Dip it in again. You start running out of water pretty fast, so you have to dip it a lot, but tap it off once or twice on your cup. You don't want to put puddles of water. For an ink wash, we don't want big puddles of water. Okay. Rinse it off, tap it a couple times, come in here and swirl it around on his big bicep. Now remember, here's where I left this little like curve. I want to leave some little white in there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna not blend that white in all the way. And get this part blended. Now, if you guys still needed to be drawing on your shrimp, don't worry. You can pull the video back up and watch me doing ink wash. The key is dip it a lot of times, tap it off a couple times, and be very careful with the little point. As soon as the point gets near that ink, it's going to act like a magnet and pull the color in. So you want to get that point right up near the ink and it'll do its job. His legs, we're going to go right along here and get his legs filled in. I'm going to show you on the shrimp what I want you to do. And if you wonder what we're going to do for an eyeball, that's where our Sharpie is going to come in and some antennas too. So you come along every place that you put ink. Do I have to go up to the line and make it fade? I don't have to. On his legs, I think I want to. I could leave a little white right in the middle of his leg if I wanted. We don't have to cover all of it. It's fun to have some of these white reflections showing in a few places. Kind of makes him look like he's underwater and kind of glassy. Left some white there. I left a little tiny bit of white there, didn't I? Put your brush in. Tap it a couple times on your water. Don't have your brush dripping water. And it's really easy if you don't dip your brush all the way in. You don't have to worry about these drops on the metal collar of your brush. So I'm going to Pull my ink right through on this leg. I'm going to get the water right up next to that line. And it just gets the nicest little blur there of color. I really do like ink wash. It's a very fun thing to do. You get very subtle little blurs of color. Tap your brush off when you dip it in. Here comes this other big joint over here. I'm going to swirl my wet brush into this big bicep. Oh, I did skip a leg. Okay, well, we're going to finish this bicep. I'm going to swirl it in and get all that red. Now, remember, I wanted to leave some white, but I'm going to rinse that off and blur that just a little bit with some clear water. Don't want it quite, quite so harsh a line. Then I'm going to blur a little bit. I'm going to inch that brush right up to this line so I get just a little pink coming from that edge. Just a little pink coming from this edge. Look at that nice little subtle color there. And then over here, I'm going to have more color. I'm going to have lots of red over here. And same thing here. Dip my brush again. If it doesn't blend as well, you need to dip your brush again. And I'm going to get all this nice red ink here. I'm going to pull it out onto my claw here. Oh, that looks nice. He looks pretty cool. This might be a little harsh, but I kind of like it, so I'm going to leave it. Now, you do the same thing with your shrimp. Tap your brush, because we want to make sure we don't have too much water on the brush. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to come in where his head is here, swirl that red around, get a little bit of color on him. I'm going to think of color just on this bottom part of him. I'm not going to go over his legs because I want them to look like lines. I'm going to fill his tail all the way in. I'm going to leave that little edge of white on the top of him. I'm going to swirl around the bottom of this one. I'm going to leave a little bit of white at the top of my shrimp. So I'm not going to go over that top line with my brush. Now as I get down here at the bottom, I'm going to fill them all in. 
I'm going to leave that little edge of white and those red lines at the top. I'm not going to go over them. Tap my brush off, and I got one more guy over here. So I'm going to go along the bottom, bottom only. Go along the bottom here. Now, as I get to these back ones, I'm going to fill them all in. But I like that little bit of white edge to them. I'm going to soften this one just a little bit. He's bigger. So I'm not going to have quite so much white on his head. I don't want them to look like little diagonal lines. There we go. Oops, and Joey reminded me. I forgot this leg on my crab. So we're going to come in and get this one little leg there. Look at that nice red. Ooh, look at that nice red color coming there. I'm going to do it on this one too. Do this end. Now, they're missing just a couple things. They're missing eyeballs on my crab so he can see where he's going so he can finally catch the shrimp, right? So his eyeballs look like little circles, but part of that circle comes up inside the shell. So we don't want it to look like a whole circle there. So I'm gonna make it look like most of that circle came out. Remember these indented bigger scallops that we left? Put his eye right there. Kind of want them to look the same size. This one needs to be maybe a little bigger. And then I'm going to leave this kind of curved triangle right in the middle. I'm going to make it really big because the ink tends to soak in and fill in some of my big triangle. See how big it started and look how much it soaked in. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Okay, my crab's got eyeballs. I think he'll be able to find the shrimp. Now the shrimp have these very long, like hair. They're as thin as a hair. Long antenna on the front and they curve and they curl and they're really long. So I'm gonna make this one. They come right from that point of his nose. I'm gonna take my Sharpie. I'm gonna curl that one way back there. And I'm gonna take that one and curl it way back there. Oh, I like that. Okay, this one over here is going to come right out in the front like he's feeling his way. Okay, where shall we make this one go? But the opposite way. Okay. Okay, we're going to try to loop this one this way. You think Miss Jenny can do it? It's going to look funny probably. Okay, here we go. Right from the tip of his nose. There we go. And right from the tip of his nose with the other one. Well, you made an interesting design, didn't it? Oh, the shrimp have eyeballs. They have very, very, very tiny little circle eyes. And they're near the end of this teardrop. So since we're looking at these guys just from one side, we're going to see one little tiny eyeball there. One little tiny eyeball there. This guy, we're looking at from this side, so I'm only gonna see one tiny eyeball right here. His eyeball's gonna be a little bigger because he's a little bigger shrimp than those. Okay, and there is our crab hunting our shrimp. Now I might, I kinda like how mine's turned out, so I might even add a few more crab, I, or shrimp. I might have a shrimp swimming in from up here. I might have one coming in from over here. I really like that guy in the bottom left corner over here where you just see his head coming in here. So, put as many shrimp on as you want. Aim for an odd number. I've got three shrimp and one crab, so even though together they equal four, I still think of them as odd numbers because this guy stands out by himself and these guys stand out by themselves. So we have odd shrimp, odd crab, and Mr. Joey's gonna pull the camera back. I could use colored pencil and put some color water in. You, if you, oh, Mr. Mark's giving suggestions on our picture too. If you wanted to take your colored pencils, we've got a light blue and a dark blue, and it'd be really cool. You could lay the colored pencil on its side and give some little ripples of water so it looks like they're underwater hunting here. Mr. Joey's gonna hand me our big pot. We got to draw a name every day, we decided, and that will equal nine when we get to the end of the week. So yesterday we drew Sarah Elizabeth's name and so this gives you a $25 credit towards our summer camps. We are going to have summer camps. Yes, yes, yes. 
unless life drastically changes, we'll be having summer camp this summer. We're getting ready to post them on the calendar, so watch for our newsletter to come out. We're going to follow social distancing and guidelines, so our camps will be very limited with the number. So when you see the email come out, you'll want to book right away. I've got names in here. Let's see who we pull out today. Ah, I have Millie Hendry. This is another little girl I'm... I got to meet her when she came to pick up her bags. Effie and Millie and their mom, Riley, have been doing bags together for a number of weeks with us. This is Millie, who I think is the younger sister. I'll have to go back and look up. But Millie Hendry, we just drew your name. So hopefully you'll come visit me for summer camp this summer. I would love to have you come join us for summer camp. We're going to put Millie's name right up here on our list that we've been drawing. And then we'll draw another name tomorrow and on Friday. So we will see you tomorrow and finish your crabs and shrimps. I really wanna see some pictures. Mr. Mark wants to do another slideshow, so we need new pictures. Take a picture of your shrimp and your crab and tag us at Idea Studio so we can see them and put them in our slideshow. We'll see you tomorrow, bye.